Hi, if you're watching this video, I probably posted a link to the video on an iNaturalist observation that you posted that showed a flower being visited by something, whether it was a butterfly, a bee, or some other insect, or maybe even a hummingbird. And before I get into the reason that, um, that the purpose of this video, I wanted to make sure that you're aware if you're using iNaturalist and you're enjoying it, you might be missing out on some of the, the cooler features and, you know, some of what makes it so, such a useful tool if you're only using the app, you know, on, on your phone or on your tablet. Um, there's also a website, it's iNaturalist.org, and a lot of people don't realize it, but it's just so much easier to kind of explore all of the data that's on there, whether it's, you know, in your neighborhood, you're curious about what's there, or if it's somewhere that you're going to go for the first time, whether it's somewhere far away, another country, or, you know, just a park that you've never been to before. All right, so make sure you check out the website. And actually, what I'm going to be talking about in this video, uh, in particular, are observation Ooh, fields, observation right? Fields. Particularly the observation field called interaction. And then there's kind of like a little arrow, and I'll put it up here. Uh, visited flower of interaction visited flower of right so that kind of shows uh something visiting a flower right and i'm going to explain how if you posted something and i added that observation field to your observation it would show up somewhere grouped with other similar observations and there's a lot to learn from that okay so um right here if you look through these observations right 133 46 species and you'll notice they are different species but what they all have in common is that they have the observation field filled out for these observations for a, a specific plant right you notice all of these have the same plant and this plant is phyla not a flora phyla not a flora is a native plant here in miami-dade county in south florida that's where i'm from so all of these show that little flower and something visiting it, right? This is a tiny little flower. One of the common names is turkey tangle fo fog fruit, and it's also called turkey tangle frog fruit. Um, and I think I've also heard it be called match head or something like that, right? So you can see all kinds of different things. This is a fly visiting, right? A lot of people don't realize flies also pollinate and also visit flowers. Uh, this is a wasp with a few different butterflies. Okay, so this is all the raw data, all that, all those observations that show something visiting one of these plants' flowers. Okay, if we want to get a little bit more organized about this, we can click on the species tab. Okay, and the other thing to consider here is we have, we're looking at grid view right now. There's also a map view, and so that map view um, is, is over here. Um, okay, before I keep going with this, actually, I just remembered you might be here because I have that link on your page. So let's say this is your observation. Okay. And maybe I added the observation field to your observation. So if you scroll down, where is that observation field? You're not going to be able to see it on the app. You're going to have to go on the website and scroll down a little bit. It's under projects. And then here's observation field. And if this little green arrow is to the side, you have to click it so that it pops up. And there it is. It's in a black font with bold font interaction visited flower of, and then you could see the plant. If I, you know, open this, let's say in another tab, It'll give you some information about the uh, the plant right here. It is turkey tangle frog fruit, and you can see where it's been seen. You can see the taxonomy. The, see, all of these things are not very convenient, or maybe not even a feature at all, depending on what version of the app you have. Okay, so, uh, but what I'm going to do is instead of clicking on the plant, I'm going to click on the the actual observation field, which is right here. Interaction visited flower of. Okay, and then from there, you can see it says observations with this field and value. If I click that, it's going to take me to that other page that I was just showing you. So observations that show this field, interaction visited flower of, with this value selected, turkey tangle frog fruit. Okay, so I'm going to click it. I'm going to open it in a new tab. And I can just close this actually, so I didn't really have to open it in a tab. Um, and I'm going to focus on Florida, right? So you see it says species here. And, and location, I'm going to put Florida, since that's what we're focusing on for today. All right. And then again, I have map view here. I'm going to go to grid view. And there are all those same observations that I was showing you, right? Check this moth out. If you live in Miami-Dade County and you look for this plant, you will you might even see this moth. It flies during the day and it's it, it'll catch your eye, right? It's a little bright orange moth. Um, but yeah, let's get more organized here and click on species. So 46 species as of right now. 
and then they're organized from most observed to least observed. Okay, so dainty sulfur, 14 observations, and you see as I scroll down, it goes down to one observation. Okay, and there are all kinds of questions you can ask yourself about why there are so many observations of dainty sulfur and so few of, you know, these other ones that are down here. And it could be all kinds of things. There are all kinds of biases here, right? Um, probably the majority of these observations are taken within a more urban area since that's where there are more people. And usually with iNaturalist observation, you see more observations where there are people because, you know, there, there aren't people in the middle of nowhere most of the time or there are less people in the middle of nowhere observing things for iNaturalist, okay? So, you know, if you're, you're a science teacher, there are so many different questions you could ask your students about, hey, why do you think there are more of these than, than of these? And it could come down to habitat. It could come down to an insect being rare or maybe an insect not liking using this flower that much. But remember, there are so many different factors that are limiting this data that it's not perfect, but it does give us a great idea of what's going on. Okay, so what I want to show you now is how to take this that I'm showing you and apply it to a different plant. Because maybe you have a butterfly garden with firebush in it and you're curious, hey, what have people seen on firebush? All right, so what we have to do is look at the URL, which is up here. That's like the link. And then at towards the end of it, you see it says and field. And then it says interaction, visited flower of, right? And it kind of has these percentages instead of spaces because that's like the HTML or something. And then after that, there's this number, 59041. Uh, sorry, 59040. That number represents phyla, not a flora. Okay, we need to change that number out so that it's, you know, the example I'm going to show you, firebush. So I'm going to go to inaturalist.org and a separate tab and I'm going to type it in, Hamelia patents or, you know, the uh, Hamelia patents. I'm not sure how to say it, but there you go, firebush. And I'm going to click view observations. So this is showing me observations of firebush, not a firebush being visited, right? These are all firebush, whereas you saw here, these are all insects, right? None of these say phyla, not a flora. They say the name of the insect. So, but what I do see in the URL is the number we want, which is 126305. I'm going to copy that number. Okay, right mouse click copy. And then here I'm going to replace the 59040. I'm going to hit paste. And you saw I replaced it. And that's the number for firebush. So now it's going to show me firebush being visited by you know whatever it is and if you have firebush and if you've been lucky enough to you know catch a hummingbird you you know that hummingbirds like this plant right they have those tubular flowers that attract hummingbirds so you see quite a few hummingbird observations here and you'll see bees um maybe some moths uh, lots of butterflies right Let's organize this and kind of see how this data is crunching. Uh, I'm going to click on species here, right? It's 21. And then the zebra long one with 44 observations, right? So if you have firebush and you live in Miami-Dade County, chances are you're going to see zebra long wings, okay? Maybe if you're lucky, you'll see some hummingbirds or some of these other um, insects, okay? So again, the same thing applies. There are a lot of biases here, but this does kind of give you a quick view of what firebush will attract. All right, I'm going to show you another example. Um, so we had firebush. And firebush, by the way, it's not really like a weedy plant that pops up on its own. Usually, most of these examples that I'm showing you um, are, are of cultivated plants, unless it's like in an area where it's growing on its own, which are only like, I think, hammocky areas. Um, unlike turkey tangle frog fruit, which grows just about everywhere. And this next plant that we're going to look at Again, I'm focusing on plants here in Miami-Dade County in South Florida. It's called Biden's Alba. And it's a little tricky because it's also, it was previously known as Biden's Pelosa, or maybe you never even knew it as Biden's Pelosa. You always knew it as Biden's Alba. But on iNaturalist, it was Biden's Pelosa. So it's kind of like a big mess with the taxonomy. If you know about plants or taxonomy, you know things jump around all the time. But okay, there we go. There's taxon ID. I'm taking the number. I copied it. And now I'm going to paste it here and replace firebush with Biden's Alba. And you'll see that this one has a lot more observation. Why? Because it's everywhere. It's all over South Florida. It's all over, I think most of Florida, I'm pretty sure it shows up. And, um, and it grows in disturbance. It's weedy. And a lot of things love this plant, right? So if you have this plant in your yard and you've been weeding it, I mean, look how many different organisms you're, you're taking habitat away from, okay? So all of these butterflies, and I mean, it just, you know, the quantity, 771 observations, you know that this is popular with pollinators, right? So you can look through here and see all of these, all of that raw data of insects visiting, 
and then if you click species again it's organizing it and i have to say also when you click observations those are the actual observations that are you know making up this data but when you click on species these are kind of like a default photo so these photos don't show it on biden's alba because it's just kind of like the assigned photo for whatever it is that was visiting okay i'm going to show you one more example which is a plant that is not weedy and um, it's very, you see it a lot in, uh, particularly in uh, Long Pine Key in the Everglades. And just in the Everglades in general, it's called Circium origulum. Uh, one of the common names is bristle thistle or horrible thistle. And it's called horrible thistle because ha it has these spines, right? So these are all observations of the plant. I want to see observations with this plant being visited. So here's that number, 127269. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it into my original uh, search. I'm going to hit paste and enter. Okay, and so a lot less observations. And again, that's because you're not going to see this growing in urban Miami, whereas Biden's Alba, you'll see it everywhere, suburban and urban Miami growing all over the place. So this likes natural areas. And so you might get um, more insects that you're not going to see in urban areas, right? That um, you're more likely to see, like the Delaware skipper, you're not going to see a Delaware skipper um, growing in an urban area. It, it likes natural areas, right? So um, let's get that. Oh, well, let me scroll through just to show you all of this. You know, it's nice seeing that that purple flower it has really attractive flowers and all the different things on it. Okay, even a beetle over here, right? Some beetles also visit flowers. And then I'm going to click species to see that breakdown. Okay, so um, I hope you've seen how awesome your observation is and how it's not just an observation, but, you know, it can be part of this really cool data set that shows us um, what flowers are being visited by what. Okay, and again, this is only scratching the surface. There are so many more observations that don't have the observation field added. Remember that. These are only observations that have the observation field added. So until more observations get that observation field added, the sample size remains very small. And some plants aren't even going to have a single, you know, maybe you're thinking of a plant that you have growing in central Florida that doesn't grow down here. You might not find a single one that has this filled out for it. Okay, so if you're frustrated by that, well, the only way to change that is by finding insects or insect observations and adding the observation field. I'm going to make another video explaining how to do that. So if you're curious about how to do it and you want to help and get, you know, more of this data, um, you know, you want to just contribute to the data and give us more valuable data, then uh, watch that other video so you can learn how to do it. Okay, whether it's your own observations or if you want to do it for other people. So uh, that's all for now. Thanks so much for watching my video. If you have any questions for me, feel free to leave a comment below or you can message me on iNaturalist or um, I'll even leave my, my email in the description. And I will also include this link in the description just in case you know you don't know where to start. You can just copy this link, paste it into your um, browser and then feel free to change this number around. Okay, again, this is only for observations that already have the field added. So make sure you, you keep that in mind and don't be too disappointed if you don't find um, any observations there yet. We need to compile the data and kind of mine all of these insect observations in order for there to be uh, data. So thanks so much again for watching and I'll see you next time.